everyone and welcome. Jenny Marples here from pushingtherightbuttons.blogspot.com. Okay, I'm back today to share a technique that's been requested. Um, I posted at the weekend a picture of some marbling that I'd been doing with Distress Oxide Reinkers, and I had quite a few requests to show how I put these together. So I'm back to do that for you today. These ones have been created in a very simple process, which I'm sure a lot of you will be familiar with. But for those who aren't, and for anybody who needs a bit of inspiration, I hope you enjoy what I've got to share with you. Okay, let's pop these out the way. So we're going to get started. The basic equipment that I'm going to need. I've got my trusty cat litter tray here. A nice deep flat tray is really useful. Okay. Um, and next up, I have some shaving foam. I've gone for a really, really cheap. It's basically the cheapest that I can from the supermarket. Um, doesn't need to be perfumed or any special kind at all. So just go with that. And you'll see I've put about, I'd say about an inch to an inch and a half layer in there. I tend to go generous with this just to make sure that as the inks are mixed through it, um, I don't get anything growing right to the bottom that I can't capture. What else have I got? I've got a straight edged, it's a ruler, but it's basically just because I need the straight edge, which you'll see. I've got a cheap and cheerful spatula. You could use even a plastic knife, whatever you want, just something to stir with. And the all important ingredients. Okay, so these are the Tim Holtz Distress Oxide Reinkers. Uh, the, the reinkers that you use for reinking his oxide distress oxide ink pads, um, absolutely beautiful little bottles of jeweled ink that is delicious and you can use for lots of different things. Um, when picking colours, I'm going for colours which are fairly close to each other on the colour wheel. So I've gone, as you can see here, with a range of greens and blues. The reason being that as I continue this process, I discovered that I'm mixing the colours together quite a lot and found that it works a lot better if I go with colours that work together rather than colours which are going to mix and make mud. So for example... Um, in the in the ones that I posted at the weekend, the colours that I went for here were fired brick, spiced marmalade and a touch of vintage photo. And you'll see that those with those lovely warm colours all went together really beautifully and created lovely effects. So let's get started. I've got my shaving foam in my tub and now I'm going to make a start. Let's go with, we've got broken china. Now you'll hear... There's a little ball in there which is shaking the ink up. It's important to make sure you do that. And then I'm just adding drops and applying those over the surface of the shaving foam. Put the lid on that one. Then I've got, this is cracked pistachio. And just making sure that I've got different colors blotted around. There we go. And finally, let's go with, this is peeled paint. I have shaken these up before in case you're wondering about my shaking. And again, just adding some drops in here. I am being generous again, but that's because I want to make sure that I get colour onto my paper. Okay, so now with that done, all I'm going to do now is just swirl Nothing particularly technical. I know you can do beautiful feathered prints and all sorts of wonderful designs once you become more proficient at this. Um, I'm just looking for basic backgrounds that I can use with my design team projects and other creations. So I'm keeping it pretty simple. Plus I'm fairly new to this, so um, simple is good. <laughs> okay, so getting that nicely swirled together. And I'm making sure that I'm going right up to the edges as well. I'm going to use with this, there we go, yeah that looks about right, making sure that I've got some colour throughout and all nicely swirled. Okay, so I am going to be using tissue all the way through, so kitchen towel just to get cleaned up. I've got for the first layer um, this is 180 GSM. I'll find out what poundage that is for those, 
um, those of you in North America. Um, I'm using watercolour paper, but it's just really a cheap pad. I've gone for something which is reasonably thick um, because obviously it's going onto a wet surface and I found that this withstood uh, quite a lot of abuse, though I know that you can use thinner papers. Okay, so all I'm doing right now is just pushing into that surface. You'll see it's like kind of oozing out of the edges. I want to make sure that I really push that in across the surface. Don't worry if it goes over the edges. Um, I mean, if you do want to protect your edges, I would suggest if you put masking tape on the on the edges. Personally, as I said, I'll be chopping these up, using them for die cuts, using them bits of them for backgrounds and torn edges. Okay, so we're ready to go. And I'll pull this off. Okay, it looks pretty underneath as well. Move that out the way. And then all I'm going to do, first of all, okay, so this one's gone quite patchy. But that's great. So I'm taking my straight edge ruler and I'm just going to remove the excess. Scrape across. And there we go. And that's going back into the tub. Pop that out the way and just clean up and I can hold that up for you can see and you can see. Okay, so the first layer is always going to be it's just it's a little bit of extra on there. I can just dab that away on the edges. The first one's always going to be pretty light. Okay, woo! It's running away from me. Um, the first one's always going to be pretty light. Um, there's lots of white in there and you can see those colours and that's kind of what um, you'd often see in a very traditional style of marbling, quite a bit of white on the background and lots of those very distinct swirls. That's great, I'm going to set that aside just to air dry and clean up and we're going back in again because I found as this process continued the results just got better and better. So. You'll see there I've got the excess that I, I took off my ruler and I'm going to continue to swirl this round. You'll see now I'm making more of a light green background. The more of the uh, white that's exposed, obviously the paler the kind of co concept you're going to get, the, the paler the background. But I'm going over this and just so I get some definite distinct patterns in there. I'm going back in with, what should we do? Let's do a little bit more of that peeled paint in here. <laughs> a little bit more, just to make distinct swirls. I don't need as much of it because obviously there's already ink and color in here. So there we go. So again, doing the same thing, just swirling and creating, just making sure I'm moving that ink around so I haven't got big blobs of it remaining. And you'll see that the shaving cream is actually taking up that colour and is more of a, a pale green than it was originally. Keeping swirling. And that's it. Okay. So we've got that one again. Right, let's get another piece of paper. And again, I'm going to push that in. Making sure I'm really pushing it in firmly. I want to make sure as much of the paper comes into contact with the surface of the um, shaving foam as is possible. I also find actually if you just let it sit for a minute or so, that also helps. Um, I'm honestly not sure of the process that's going on underneath, but I would guess that it gives the ink time to react and apply to the surface of the paper. And bearing in mind that there is dye and um, permanent ink into this the, re uh, the oxides, um, you're going to find that they will react slightly differently. Let's 
pull this off, move out the way the tray, and here we go again. Let's take our ruler and let's scrape across. Now that's what I'm talking about. Okay, now you can see there, just, just so you can see, I'm just scraping that back into the tray there. Okay, get cleaned up. And you can see now that there's a lot more colour to this piece than there was to the other. Let's hold that steady for you. Okay, so the colours have really latched on a lot more to the paper. Let's bring the original up just so you can see. It's a little bit on there on the edge. You can dab that off. Let's bring up the original. So here's the first version and you can see there's a, a fair amount of white left on that. Um, but here we've got the second version and there's a lot more of that green. Okay, let's dive back in again. Again, set this aside to dry. So let's pull this back in again. And again, now we've got a gorgeous green colour going on in here. And I'm going to bring some of the white that was at the edges back into this, just to kind of add in some light. Now you can maybe see why it is. It's almost like making a cake, <laughs> a non-edible cake. Let me stress that right now. Um, you can see maybe now why I put um, a decent amount in the tray just so that I've got enough to work with um, and also so that the ink had lots of medium to mix in with, lots of shading from there to mix in with. So now I've got kind of a, a more of a pale green base across the whole thing. So obviously I could go in with green right about now, but let's do something. I'm finding that if you do a contrast with it, that works rather well. Okay, so let's bring in, I'm going to add some, this is faded jeans. So give that a bit of a shake and we'll do some drops with faded jeans. I think you can see now why I'm going for colours of a similar quality, so from the same side of the colour wheel, just so that as I'm mixing them together, they aren't creating mud, which obviously if I put blue and orange and purple and yellow and various others in there, yes, they might do. Okay, so let's do some swirling again. So I'm making sure that they are getting mixed in, but on the other hand, I'm making sure that the swirls are still very visible. So it doesn't need, you know, like a complete, doesn't need beating and overworking. So there we go. If you see any that are, um, any swirls that are like lumps or whatever, make sure you go in at this stage and just mix them up a little. And I think that will do that one nicely. Okay, scrape that off there. Okay, let's get another piece of my watercolour paper. And pushing that right in, squishing it down. You'll feel on the surface There we go. You'll feel as it's making contact with the with the foam. And make sure that it kind of squidges over the edges as well, so that you get the maximum coverage on your piece of paper. There we go. And it's always fun to find out it's always fun to find out what it is you're going to reveal. So here we go. Let 
see what the next one brings. Peel that off. Oh, I love those colours. Okay, so here we go. So there's a there is some white there on this one. And taking my ruler and just one scrape across. Oh, there we go. Love that. So that's got that you can really see how the blues have worked on this one. Um, as I said, if you're going for something with um, a, same, a deeper or a lighter shade to what's already in your tray, then you're going to get some lovely results. Now I must admit I'm working on my, not on the um, side that I normally work on here, I'm working on my craft table which kind of bows in the middle a little. So um, there we go, so it's not going across as flat as I'd want. I do just do one pass, I would say. Um, I'm just doing one pass with my ruler. Um, I can easily dab off any excess um, once it's actually dried. The ink and the shaving foam are still wet at this stage and I find if I go across again with my ruler, um, I did find that I got some smudging um, before on my first attempts. So I found it was a lot easier just to leave these and sit them aside to dry and then pop that out the way and then I could come back and um, I could come back and, and dab off any excess afterwards. So let's just do one final one because I'm sure by now you've completely got the hang of this and again if you like already what's on, on there bear in mind there won't be so many swirls but if you're happy with just a you know an underwater scene of mixed colours then go for it. Just make sure you've got everything coloured up. I am. I do like adding in extra drops, drops, just because I do prefer getting a more of a distinct swirl. Um, and I think it helps if you're trying to show that you are actually marbling. Um, it does kind of help if you, you've got, actually got some some marble looking effects in there, which is basically the swirls or the feathering or whatever. So just adding this is. I'm going back in with the broken china. You see we now have 48 Distress Oxide re colours available to us so the, the possibilities are endless it has to be said and with the last Distress Oxide um, in the set, uh, the last 12 will be released by Ranger in October so once we've got those that takes us up to 60 of our favourite Distress Oxide colours and yeah Oh, yeah, I, I think you'll be seeing a lot more marbling, let's put it that way. <laughs> okay, so let's get that swirl going on. There we go. I think I might just add one more drop just in that corner there. Doesn't seem to have so much going on. Now you're going to ask how long does, will this last for? Well basically you can just keep going frankly. Um, I did, it was about a dozen I think in the end and uh, before I finally decided to call it a day with that particular colour combination. Um, you can just keep going as I said if you stick with colours which are of uh, from a similar colour palette then you're not going to be making any mud down there then you're really you can just keep on playing um, and you'll have an endless supply of backgrounds and if you think about doing the greens for example um, doing some of the greens and swirling those in with maybe some yellows and stuff you can get beautiful backgrounds that will be ready for the festive period and also if you go with those oranges and reds then you've got stuff for uh, um, autumn coming up um, and also maybe even Halloween and if you like the softer side of life you can always mix the reds with the pinks and maybe some purples as well and go very girly. Okay so making sure that's nicely 
pressed and firmly down in the middle. That's the area that needs contact with the shaving foam. And let's just peel this one off and see where we've got to with this one. Again, when you peel it off, it never looks like much. I have to say, the first time I did this, I was kind of horrified and thought, oh no, I've ruined it. But actually, this is like when you first do heat embossing and you smooth that down, do heat embossing, and the reveal is the bit that gets you hooked. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, loving these colours. So, to get the shaving foam back off and into my container, treat myself to a spare bit of another piece of tissue, just to get cleaned up a little. And let's just hold this up so you can see it in more glory. There we go. Okay, so, oh, there's a little bit underneath. So there we go. Look at that. And you can see how each one of these has come out very, very different. So again, let's go back to the original piece there. And you've got a, a, very, much, um, a very much paler tone, but also quite distinct um, with its white background. And you can actually, because these tones are going to start to work together, you can then mix and match them and use them in layers over the top of each other. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed seeing what I've created today. Um, if you've got any questions, please do leave some comments uh, below. Um, one super quick heads up. Um, if you want to see marbling extraordinaire, and trust me, this stuff is, is professional quality, make sure you check out the YouTube channel of Nick the Booksmith. I'll leave a link below. Um, her marbling is out of this world. Um, and she's actually now doing uh, downloadable digital prints of some of her exquisite mixes. So please do make sure you check that out. That's it from me. If you have got more requests for tutorials, videos, whatever, please make sure you let me know. Um, if you've enjoyed seeing what I've created today, please um, hit the like button. And if you haven't yet subscribed, and welcome to all my new subscribers, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. And I'll be back with you very soon. Bye.